Most people believe that friendships should last forever. Sadly, some friendships die a painful death and everyone involved just moves on like nothing happened. The big question is, if friendships are vital and almost indispensable, why don't we talk about what to do when they end? I am Bisola Ayola, and on today's episode of Real Talk, I'm at Zen Apartments to discuss with a few friends about breakups in friendships, dealing with them, and knowing what to do when they end. Let's go. Hello, hello, Eve. Hello, Titi. Hello, Yinka. You're welcome to Real Talk. And today, we are going... I hope everyone's comfortable. Oh, super comfortable. Relaxed. Yeah. Are you comfortable? Awesome, awesome. Today, we're going to be talking about breakup in friendships. Mm. In friendships. Mm. I think it's, it's a topic that, you know, people don't really talk about. You know, it just kind of feels like, oh, yeah, if you stop being friends with this person, move on, you'll find another friend. I, I, I recently, some months ago, stopped. It's heartbreaking just thinking about it. <laughs> because sometimes I miss her even though she gets coconut head. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, we never really talk about it. Why do you think that is? I'd say because people don't see friendship as, um, as a trust-based relationship, so to say. Hmm. They... they, they when you say relationship from the Nigerian context, I would say most people expect intimacy and you know, things like that. Mm. So mm. It, yeah, when you say relationship, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. they forget that. They, even the intimacy, there is a level of workability you can have if the friendship is not there. Mm. So that is the actual bedrock. So it's a, it's a faulty mentality that a lot of people have carried for some time. So when you want to hear relationship, they're thinking, Boyfriend and girlfriend, <laughs> man and woman things. Yeah. No, but really, friendship. Friendship is beautiful. Like mm. friendship is so the the amount of trust you can build in friendship, the amount of loyalty you can build in friendship, yeah. you know, the amount of commitment you can build in friendship. People don't people don't enjoy those things. Unfortunately, mm. you wait until you get into a relationship and then you can't hold it together, together because yes, there's the no friendship, friendship wasn't there. So that's my take. Mm. What's your take, Eve? Who, um, friendship breakups, just like you said, I'm going through um, a similar situation. So I felt it. <laughs> I felt that, bro, I think um, maybe, you know, I used to say this thing, like people get to know each other and in less than how many minutes they're already calling themselves friends, friends yes. which I think is an issue mm -hmm. because there's so much to friendship. Okay. Um, I, on the other hand, I fall so easily because love relationship, <laughs> friend relationship. I'm just a fully in love girl. So um, huh, um, I think for me, it's very, very easy. I'm what you see is what you get. Mm. So if I like somebody and I feel like someone and I connect, it's really easy for me to want to give. Mm. And I've just noticed people, be it orientation or I don't know what it is. People are not really used to that much mm. love or attention. Mm. So this situation I'm talking about, it's been, we were friends for quite some time. Um, I felt like we knew each other well enough. And it just, literally, I haven't, my, my heart still hurts every single time I have to think about it. It's been, what, maybe a few months now. The funny thing is we made friends over the fact that someone did not wish her happy birthday on her birthday. And oh, I was like, yeah. that's not something anyone should do. Do, yeah. do you want to know how the friendship broke up? She did not wish you happy She did not wish me <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. And I'm here like, but like, I would expect you to yeah, know so at least. that this is not a thing you should do because this mm. was literally what we bonded over. So mm. I just feel like sometimes maybe we don't take enough time. Just the same way people tell you, take time with relationships. Yes, Just as he said, yes. people do not see friendships. In that at, way. Yeah, you should actually take time, days. figure out who it is you're getting into a friendship with. Because yeah. there are things I will tell my friends that I don't know if I would easily tell my family. Mm. That's the kind of friendship I want to have. Like, family doesn't always have to be blood. Yes. Well, what's your take on this? Sir? Well, a um, couple of takes, actually. Now, the thing is with, um, I think one of the reasons people see it 
from that um, seed in a sort of like a desical manner is that, especially in the male world, um, waiting do today and while no mind that they, they fight, they fools. It's not seen as a big deal. You understand? Because again, we don't overly celebrate our friendships. You understand? But if it's two women, they say, ah, they're not talking again. What happened? What happened? There's this. But well, two guys, there's, there's usually, you understand? True. So, so I, I, I guess that's one of the reasons. It's not seen as such a big thing. And especially, and understand that with men too, the process for settling is very different. Sometimes I just sit there and say, this is a decrease. This is a decrease. Anyway, now you need to pay for my beer. Uh, <laughs> that's the end. One. So, so that's why it's not such a mm. big thing, especially in the male side, side yeah, of, yeah. Of, of, yeah. of things. And I think another, another thing is that, um, like you say, uh, friendships are sort of taken for granted. granted. Yes. And so we don't think it's such a big deal if they end, because there's usually that thing of, <laughs> They go set to Yes, yes. True. Have you ever had to cut somebody off, stop them from being your friends? I have. You have. Why? <laughs> Please, I would love to hear the story. <laughs> How many Nigerians are going to see this? <laughs> no, we're not going to mention any names, but maybe if the person watches. Or that I die. I will talk him. <laughs> Actually, I stopped being someone's friends because. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was, he was involved with someone I was involved with, Yikes. and he was running it behind my back, under my roof. With the involve, with the involvement, is it? It's entanglement. It's oh. Oh, okay, okay. I was thinking maybe. I, I have one question. <laughs> was it deliberate? Like, did the hmm. guy do it to spite you, or? Life just happened. Yeah, yeah. What, Emotions. What, what's the circumstances up? that transpired? Yeah, if you know. Okay, I think I, I I think that it was just because of his perception of um, relationships and all that. Yeah, I guess he was just that sort of person that didn't see such things as big deals. So it's like she may not be your wife. Not be say you won't marry him. And now make wow. make we put them for floor. I mean, I'm like that's the no you understand? area. It's, yeah, we should not. And so the thing ran behind my back. For mm. how long? Ah, ah. And hope you broke up with the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand? Mm. Yeah, that, that was it. And when I when I found out, it was it was it was really crushing because it was just I just the duplicity of it all and and I'm like, so if I didn't stumble how long would this have continued? And it just let me know that um, the person didn't really, I don't think the person really valued the friendship the way I valued it. And unfortunately, or fortunately, it was a new friendship. Mm. Ah, okay. So okay. I just decided, you know what? No, this, which, which was more painful? The friendship break it up or the relationship in this case? Okay, honestly. Yes. I didn't end the relationship till about two months after. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't. I was not expecting, I was not expecting that, honestly. I didn't, I didn't bring it up. I didn't, I didn't bring it up because as, as a bona fide man on the street, you have to identify a get out of jail card when you see one. Mm. So you go keep out for pocket. Yeah. So when you need oh. to get out of jail, you bring it out. See how, see how she's saying, yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm the bona fide man on the street. <laughs> I don't know but, if I feel like that. <laughs> what about you? Have, you? have you had to, you know, cut somebody off, stop being friends with someone? Oh, several times. So is the problem with you or with them? No, well, I always, <laughs> it doesn't matter who the problem is with. with mm. As far as I'm concerned, as long as your perceptions are not aligning, mm. you people are lying to yourselves. Mm. And you, you know, I, I'm not... I think I'm a little too blunt with my realness mm. to not be able to accommodate all that. Oh, let us just be doing face value. I yeah. don't know how to do it. If I'm cool with you, you will know I'm cool with you. If I'm not, you know I'm not. It doesn't mean that we will not see see higher. But mm. for that level of, you know, friendship, like you're my guy, you're, you know, I, I've always had a very small circle, always, mm. and my my circle never expands. Rather, it narrows down. Yeah. 
Okay. So okay. I've, I've lived with that for the longest time and I'm fine with it. You get me? So, hoarders, people that hoard a lot of stuff, just as relationships, how, you know, you see somebody and you're like, oh, this guy is not good for you, this girl is not good for you, but you're like, you don't know how he makes me feel. You don't know how she makes me feel. And you just keep holding on to it. Have you ever found yourself holding on to a friendship that you know is bad for you, is toxic, is draining you? To be honest, yes and no. Uh -uh. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> yes and no, because I ha it's like, you know when you should just cut it? Yeah. and be done with it mm. and then you it's like people who are in relationships and they always take breaks and you're like dude nobody really recovers from a break just end it yeah. and i think that was what that was um it was like everybody was seeing it aside me and then maybe we would have a fight and i wouldn't talk to her for quite some time and then she's she was really a, she's really a stubborn person so after a while she, when she apologizes it's like <gasps> You are okay, okay. Let's, actually, you know this, and then trying. it'll take a bit, and then I think finally, when I finally, because I think she knew there was a time span, you know, like you'd get upset for like maybe two to three weeks. If you want to be bad, it'll be a month, but that's about it. So mm -hmm. she knew me, and it took a while for me to realize that was the dynamic. And then one time, it was really, really bad. And I just told myself, I'm like, you can't do this. She was going through some things. And I think sometimes pe emotional blackmail is one of the things people use to keep you in that loop and hmm. you don't realize it. Yes. And so before, the minute I want to get upset about something, she brings up something she's going through, mm -hmm. knowing that that's my Achilles heel. Yes. And immediately I get to work trying to solve things. And maybe my mom would be like, uh, look at you. Yeah, yeah, I'll see things again. again. Well yeah. done. I'm like, no, it's not even like that. Like, she's going through this and this. And she's like, yes, but you're going through stuff as well. How many times does this person run when you're in need? And eventually, one day, I just said, you know what? I'm done with this. Like, I'm finally, finally done. And she gave, for the very first time, she gave me the space I needed. Mm. And finally, she worked on herself. And at that point, it was like, okay. I'm not trying to be your friend. When she did come back and we had a conversation, I'm like, listen, I'm, I don't even want, I don't know if I want to be your friend. I just, no, because you just need to get to that point whereby yeah. you realize you can actually be without that person. It doesn't mean you don't care about them anymore, yeah. but you just grow up to the point where you realize I can still love you from afar. I can pray for you. We don't have to talk all the time. So have you ever had to hold on to a relationship or have you ever been blackmailed <laughs> into being in a relationship? Okay. Relationship mean Well, friendship. Meaning, friendship in this case. Are we, okay. Well, so let's, friendship. Strictly let's friendship. Let's be clear. Friendship. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, not really. Because first, um, being a writer, I, I am careful with words. So I don't use the term friend loosely. Acquaintance... Yes, close acquaintance, yes. Friend, mm, I'm very careful about who I will call my friends. And then also within the context of friendships, I'm also realistic and practical about, because expectations begat disappointment. So what are you expecting? How much are you expecting? It determines how vulnerable you are to be disappointed. So I, I, I think I tend to look at the people I even call my friends and say, what are this person's feelings? You understand? And so I live my life in such a way that their feelings don't really get to me, get me to that point where I am disappointed. Honestly, yeah, and I agree with what you're saying because I started to adopt that mentality, just accept people for who they are. Yeah. And so you know their limits. So disappointments are really checked and it helps. It really does help. <clears throat> uh, something I also want us to take into consideration is the fact that sometimes people outgrow each other. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and friends just, because the, the, the funny thing about it is that if you're all friends and and fortune just smiles on one in a particular way yeah. and they're elevated socioeconomically yeah. it might not be their fault you just because what you're thinking about what you're talking about 
I mean, they're practically rolling their eyes because really they've moved on. Yes. So, so um, to push that just a little further, I mentioned something earlier about perceptions aligning. Mm. You guys can be of wide margin social classes, but your perceptions can align. Can align. So mm. the reason why you have gravitated away from those people is not because yeah, your social status has elevated. It's because that social status now has separated the alignment of your perceptions. You guys cannot discuss the same things anymore. Mm. So it's more of the perception. They are, trust me, you'll be shocked that Dangote has one guy in Daura. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of, it, it's fine being a farmer. Yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't have no ambition for or nothing. Yeah. Else. And anytime he goes to Dara, that is the only person he wants to see. Mm. Do you know what it means for the perception to align with somebody? It's beyond money, it's beyond material, yeah. Yeah. it's beyond any of all those things. Hmm. Like, you guys can literally hear each other's thoughts because you guys are thinking in the same direction. It, it, it's, it's beyond the material end of it. So, you, it's, it, if you see people who, you know, that when money comes in for one person, they divide. The division has been there even before the money came mm. in. Definitely, but the situation yeah. has not warranted, circumstances have not presented opportunities for it to be that obvious that you people, your perceptions don't align. So I'm going to ask you, Titi. Yeah. How do you disconnect? Are you want to detach slowly? Are you want to just stop talking to the person? Are you want to block them on all platforms so that they don't reach you? Is that how you... No, no, no. I don't. I, I think we've all... Even if we can't be friends, it doesn't mean that we cannot be acquaintances or have value to give ourselves sometimes in the, in the journey of life. So, but one thing will be, will be certain and will be clear. You would know that our perceptions don't align. Mm. So the, the relationship would casualize, even without spoken mm. breakup. Mm. You would understand that, me and this guy, but it will not be a case of we'll not be able to see ourselves on fist bumps mm. or shoulder bump, mm. you know, give no call. And it's not going to be that. Mm. But things will have popped up and you will have seen my reaction. Um, I can be very outspoken, but my outspokenness is not to say so much. I mm. can just drop just one line. But you that I'm talking to, you've got the message. I've said what I want to say and, you know, moving on. So you already know next time, whatever I say, Anytime you see me, you'll be remembering this in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> that, so you already know that, yeah, this guy, except you are willing to shape up in some areas yeah. or some things. That and makes... vice versa, too. Like, if I see that, I found, because nobody's perfect, yeah. I mean, we all try to you know, just learn and grow and stuff. So if I see that I'm the one who was finding myself wanting, I'm always very, very, very quick to own my blames, yeah. you know, take it full chest. Like, this one is on me, I take it. I try to work on it. If I see that it's an area that is impossible for me to work on, then I understand that it is because of me that the relationship could not go further. Okay. Just own it, take it. I mean, mm -hmm. take it with full chest. So, sorry, do you ghost people or your friends? Like, I wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> no explanation, nothing, no closure. Cool talkie, I'm out. Why? Honestly, why? For me to get to that point, I've decided this place is not good enough for me. But deep inside me, I'm a bit of a softie. So two months down the line, I would say, let me check this idiot. <laughs> then I will reconnect. Then they will shoot me again. Hmm. So what's the use? Hmm. So you've at least even given a chance. I just... And, it, and it's, it's been worse the past two years of my life. Any small sign. I'm out, especially with relationships. Any small sign, I just, I'm just out. I just go. Would, would you say that's more for your mental health? Yes, mm. it is for my mental health, because the truth about it is that there's some telltale signs. Once I see, I know that we're not, uh, <clears throat> we we we're not working for each other because I don't really think they're outrightly good or bad people. Some people just don't work for each other. So as I see those signs, I'm out. I've, I've paid my dues too in the past. <laughs> yeah. So I have now learned what works for me. So once I see those signs, I just go out. It's, it's, it's complete. Beautiful, beautiful. Eve, what are some of the things that you think cause breakups in friendships? Um, I'd have to borrow a page from <laughs> this book, which, as he said, um, perception's not aligning, which is deeper than you know we even give credit to 
if you and somebody are not made of the same substance, you know, you're bound to butt heads. Um, there's that. There's, well, I mean, perception and learning is so, I think it's so broad. Yes, it is. It's actually, so broad because, um, than, you know, yeah, you I can't haven't thought say, of friendship on that level. On that level. Yeah. But it's so deep. So thank you for that. Like, <laughs> really, it's really so deep because I was about to say, oh, you know, people's personalities. I'm like, dude, it's the same thing. <laughs> Now, I want to ask you this. What, what's your take on entitlement in friendship? For me, it's, it's <laughs> complicated. <laughs> it is, I Be, agree. Yes, it is. Because while you will instinctively say, I hate. But then, if I'm, if I'm eating... There's some people, I'll be irritated if they say, I bet if you join you, ah, dude, why did they ask me? Join. Yeah. And there's some people, if they just join, in my mind, like, ah, when did why did not go ask me? <laughs> <laughs> so that might be maybe a frivolous um, 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 part, uh, yeah, part of it. But um, I, I, I know that if not handled, <clears throat> Carefully, you understand. It tends, it, it it could actually lead to, it could spiral into a lot of things. But I get again, there are some people who are just instinctively entitled. You know them. You don't need to have been friends with them for three years to know. You will see it, and then I think that to a large extent, you will just have learned, have come up with a way of dealing with it because. Some people are just ridiculously entitled. You understand? They, they, and, and they don't know, and most of them don't know boundaries. They don't have boundaries. So for me, I think that in every relationship, there's a, there should be a level of entitlement. I still haven't figured it out completely if it's a good or a bad thing, but I do know that entitlement is important in every relationship. There should be some level of entitlement in every relationship. So what's your take on that? Um, <clears throat> my perception is very simple. Oh, <laughs> alignment. <laughs> hey, we're balancing and <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, you know what? It, um, I will put the the word alignment on pause in everything I say yes. before you people carry it <laughs> flow. <laughs> yeah, but it's simple. When we were speaking earlier, I picked one thing. I I would say there are two reasons why. Um, entitlement most times is misused mm. because as you say when you're in a relationship with somebody be it a friendship there's so the first reason is boundaries mm. boundaries you guys don't set up people don't know a boundary is not what somebody says for you the minute your friend is setting boundaries for you you guys have a problem mm. you set your own boundaries your friend says that is how it works that's the level of respect you have for the person that's how you see the person the minute the person is the one setting it has gone to a stage where you can feel that this person is putting is trying to is trying to communicate with you without there's a problem boundaries true pureness of intent you so when you get in a friendship with somebody yes you you are you and you do things for the person with the expectation that the person will do the same for you. So that expectation should not be on your mind. Mm. Circumstances will present itself so. for the person to show you that they can do the same for you. Mm. So but you do it because that is how you see that person. It is for yourself. So, and these are the things that, the sort of things that bring entitlement that people don't see. That the person that thinks, the person you actually think is entitled is the other person that has felt the entitlement first because you have an expectation of your own too. Like, okay, if I can give this guy a tenner when I'm hungry, when, when they're hungry, when I'm hungry, they're able to give me tenner. Get it off your mind. What what is important at that time is this person is hungry. I have tenner to give. If tomorrow comes and it's tenner, the person can give. So, be honest. What is the what is the reason for what you do? Hmm. What is the reason for your commitment? What is the motive behind hmm. every sacrifice that you make? Hmm. Pureness of intent. 
Yeah. What about you? Let me ask now. What's your own take on entitlement in friendships? Hmm. So I had said something earlier. Um, if I want to do something for a friend, I do it because I want to do it. That's who you are. And I try as much as possible not to expect the same in return mm. to avoid getting disappointed. And I think that's the best way not to get entitled because mm. you now know that you know entitlement basically builds off of expectation mm. i think entitlement is you setting specific expectations and you get disappointment when those things aren't met yes. so it's like just try to begin with not to expect too much mm. should you um want certain things for your friendship yes should you expect them maybe not i think that's that's the best way to keep it safe and then Based off of how the friendship is going, you will start to know things that are the dynamic that will become the dynamic of your friendship. So you, it's not it's no more an expectation. It's just you just realize, OK, this is how it's being done with me and this person. This is how we roll with me and this person is an entirely different way. Mm. You start to accept it. So it's more or less acceptance rather mm. than expecting. Expecting. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one last question. I want to ask, what do you think people can do to avoid losing friends? Okay, that, that's, a, that's a very interesting one because... Is it about us now or is it about them? Okay, what we can do to avoid losing friends? I, I, I think losing friends is, is just a regular rite of passage. <laughs> As you move on, you will lose friends. You understand? Your perceptions won't align. <laughs> Preach it. <laughs> With time. So I, I don't think... It, I don't think we should be scared of losing, losing friends. friends yes. But I think that, um, I think if there's anything we should be scared of or should walk towards is being the cause for the loss of the friendship. You understand? It shouldn't be something we have done or we are not doing. I think that's what we should be more concerned about, not so much about, about the, generally the loss of friendships. We should just Go with Drink the water and. <laughs> what about you, TT? Hmm? Well, well, um, it's simple. Understand that friendship is a journey. And the perception should be aligned. Yes, in the course of that journey, when you realize that your perceptions don't align, don't lie to yourself. Mm. Mm. Chicken up. That's it. That's it. What about you, Eve? <sighs> Losing friends. So. I had said that I feel like the term friend is loosely used. <laughs> yeah. So um, be yourself. Mm. If you're really my friend, I wouldn't lose you. Mm. So if you're lost, we're, <laughs> never, we were never friends, friends to begin with. Yeah. Um, I just think be more intentional with starting friendships and then you would lose less friends because mm. you would now, your perceptions <laughs> will now align. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, TT. Thank you so much, Eve. Thank you so much, Inka. It was nice having you on here with us on Real Talk. Um, I absolutely enjoyed this, talking about friendship. Even though, just thinking about it, my heart is breaking again <laughs> from my friend that, you know, yeah, that I've broken up with. with? <laughs> but yes, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any experience that you'd like to share, please share it, drop it in the comment section. Uh, and yes. If your perceptions are aligning with your friends, let us know. <laughs> if they're not aligning, please let us know. And yeah, we'll just keep the conversation going. My name is Bisola Ayola. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Real Talk. Au revoir. Bye-bye.